everyone, welcome back to the channel. I have another tour video for you today, but this is gonna be my studio tour video. This is where I run all of my operations for my production company, Cinema Creative, and I also do YouTube videos, Instagram content, stuff like that here. I've been in here for about a year now, but it's taken a little bit of time to finally get it set up and into a place where I felt it was worth sharing. Now a little overview on the space. This is a 267 square foot room, which is basically 30 or 40% larger than my home office. I was starting to outgrow my house as far as gear and storage and all of that. And I also wanted to move into a building where I could expand and grow the business. One of the biggest selling points for me when getting this space was one, the high ceilings. I do a lot of filming in here. So being able to set up lighting without having to deal with low ceilings. And then of course the window back here all of the other units that I was looking at didn't have windows and they were a little larger and a little more private, but I wanted some natural light. I hate working in an area with no windows, so having that window was a good trade-off for having just open glass where you could see right through it. It's kind of like a converted classroom, I would say. It's got these windows and then a door, so there's not much privacy there. So one of the first things that I did when I moved in here was just frost the windows to give me a little bit of privacy and a little bit of separation between the common area and this unit. So let's take a walk around and I'll show you around the studio and everything that I have placed in here. And just like last time, I'm gonna use this camera as kind of a vlog style camera just to walk through. I think it's a little easier to show it to you that way. So let's get right into it, starting with the desk setup. You can tell already this is not as minimal and simple as my home setup. For the desktop, I have the same exact one as my home setup, and that's the Salgen IKEA countertop. It's 74 inches long, and I just love these because they look great. They're super cheap. This was like $70. I have literally matching desks. I have one here and then one at my home setup. But the difference is I have these desk legs by Autonomous. I like these desk legs a lot more than the ones that I have at home. I think they're built a lot better and I also like that you have these custom function buttons here so you can set different heights. But as far as the desk itself, it's just simple. You've got your wood top with black legs. I just think it looks nice and clean. Now everything here is being powered by my custom built PC. The specs on this is we have a Ryzen 3700, which before you guys start hitting me in the comments about it, I'm gonna upgrade it soon to a 5950, or I might hold out until we get a new one released, but we have a 3700 RTX 3070 graphics card, 64 gigs of RAM, M.2 SSD, and then some extra SSD storage in there. It could use a little improvement mainly with the CPU, but as far as most of the projects that I take on with it, this has been more than enough for me. But I will say ever since the new MacBook Pro came out, I think it's time for me to upgrade this so I can keep up with it a little bit. On top of the PC, we have this little device right here. This is a switch bot and basically I have a little USB hub up here that runs down to this and connects to the Wi-Fi and I'm able to remote turn on and off my computer whenever I'm gone because if I'm not at home, I usually run this through Parsec through the internet so I'm able to access my computer pretty much from wherever I am in the world. Moving up, we have the dual monitor setup, which is a stacked setup, a little different from what I've done in the past. Down here, we have a 34 inch LG ultra wide monitor. And this is the first ultra wide monitor that I've actually gone with. I've talked about it in the past that I wasn't really a fan of them, but whenever I came up with the idea for this setup, it just kind of made more sense. I really do like the length of it. I love that I can have a super long timeline in Premiere or whatever I'm working on and just have that extra screen real estate. And then I have the monitor up top so that I can preview everything. The monitor itself is sitting on this desk arm, which I've never had a monitor mount like this, but I'm really happy with it. I've touched on it on some of my other videos. Some of the desk mounts that I've had in the past are pretty nice, but I just like the way this is built. You can really adjust it how you want and it's not as finicky as some of the other ones. So I would highly recommend this. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description for that if you're interested in picking that up. Now let's move up here to the OLED monitor. Now the cable management's all messed up because the track keeps falling and I don't want to fix it again. So just bear with me on that. But this is a 48 inch LG C1 OLED TV. These have become very popular in the film industry in recent years. 
especially for video editors and colorists. This OLED monitor has a million to one contrast ratio, which pretty much means the blacks or the dark areas of the image are about as true as it gets. It's basically like looking at a giant retina display. Now the TV is pricey coming in at $1,100 for a 48 inch, but when you put into consideration how much you get out of this thing compared to the five, ten, twenty thousand dollar industry standard monitors, you really couldn't ask for anything better. Whenever I'm not using it for coloring, I pretty much always have like a podcast or a YouTube video on above me, and it's just nice having something to watch while I'm working. Now one thing I want to mention is the distance between my desk and the monitor, because I know people are going to say that the TV is too close to me, but really the desk is offset a couple feet. So I'm really sitting about four feet from the monitor, which is the proper distance from it. So I have no issues as far as like eye strain or my neck having to like strain by looking up at it. It's pretty much in a neutral position and it's pretty comfortable to work at. I haven't had any issues with it so far. Moving to the top of the desk here, we have the peripherals. Same thing as my home setup. We have the Logitech master keys and mouse. I know a lot of people in the comments from my last video were kind of hating on it. Now I could be wrong, but I think a lot of the people who don't like these are probably gamers, so they have different needs anyways. But I think for a creator who's doing video editing, these are more suited for that. The keyboard and mouse are sitting on a leather desk mat from Harbor London. This is a great product that I've had for a couple years now and it's really held up. And I kind of like how the leather is aged through time. It doesn't look completely perfect and new anymore, which isn't always a bad thing. I kind of like the look of it. For desk speakers, I'm using the Edifier 2000 Pros. I've had these for about a year now and I don't really get much use out of them here just because I can't really play loud music all the time because I have other people working around me but they're great for any time I need to edit audio or if I just wanna to listen to music. I don't need anything unfiltered or anything crazy like professional studio monitors. These definitely get the job done for me. Moving over to the left of the desk, we just have this fake plant here, strictly for aesthetic purposes. This area just seemed really dull before and I had this plant laying around. I didn't know what to do with it. So I just tucked it back in that corner. And I also have a little light beam back here, but honestly it kind of sucks and I don't use it. So it's not really worth mentioning. But the main lighting for this setup is the lights back here. I just have a light strip. It's a Philip Hue light strip, which I also have connected to this other bulb here. I control it from my phone so I can change the intensity, the color, all of that. And lastly for this desk setup is the chair. This is the Ergo Chair Pro from Autonomous. I like this chair. I've had it for a little bit. Honestly, I kind of prefer the Ergo Chair Pro Plus, which is the one that I have at my home office, but this one is still nice. It does have a lot of lumbar support, a lot of different customizable options to make it as comfortable as possible. But overall, again, it is a little bulky, so it's not my favorite chair, but I would still recommend it if you're into this style. And I know people are gonna ask, cable management, just like my other setup is Functional, not the prettiest, but it gets the job done. As long as there aren't a million cables hanging out under here, I'm pretty happy with it. So now let's move on to the other side of the wall and let's check out the filmmaking setup. All right, so over here is the filmmaking wall. This is kind of the space of the area where I do all of my filming, where I store all of my gear. Starting over here is this telescoping ladder, which I got the idea from an old Casey Neistat video. So you can extend it all the way up, do whatever you need, and then it telescopes all the way back down and it's easy to store. And then up here we have a backdrop holder. I only have one backdrop up here, this gray one, just because this is basically all that I use, but just nice to have a backdrop to drop down and turn this area into kind of a YouTube set or use it as a backdrop for other client videos. And I do a lot of product stuff too. Then moving down here, we have my camera cart. Now this is one of my favorite pieces of equipment. This camera cart is the Crane 750 All Terrain, I think, cause it has aired tires. You can fold it up like this where it's kind of like a half cart and then you could stack everything from there, but you can also extend the bottom and it becomes like a six foot long camera cart so you can fit everything you need on there. The tires are really high quality. You can run this thing through dirt, mud, whatever, and it's gonna get through. The wheels aren't gonna get stuck or anything. So I would highly recommend this if you're looking for a high quality camera cart. Next up, we have this mobile workbench from Husky. I got this from Home Depot when I first moved into the space because I needed something that I could wheel around and use as a multi-purpose setup. 
So the main use for it is for building my camera gear, stuff like that, but I also use it for top-down videos, product stuff. And it's Husky brand, it's meant to be like a workbench. This is real wood, looks really nice, and I just love that it's on wheels so I can roll it around the studio. But for the most part, this chills right here. This is where I keep my camera case and my cameras on and I can build stuff here. My main camera of choice is the Canon C70. I purchased this last year and this thing has handled pretty much every everything that I've needed it to handle, whether it's commercial work, music festival and touring work, documentary work, it pretty much handles everything. Over here we have my Nanook 935 camera case. It fits the entire camera kit and other accessories. These are great products. I really recommend their stuff and also the owner and everyone who works at that company is really awesome. So shout out to Nanook. Now this is essentially just camera storage. Starting over here, I have all of my C stands, which they're kind of mismatched right now because I have a bunch of stands all over the place. So like some of these gobo arms aren't really meant to be on these specific stands, but this is where I try to keep all of my stands whenever I'm not using them. Back here, we have a couple more stands. We have like a little mini combo back there, some extra backdrops back there. And then we have this stand right here, which is holding an Aperture 300X. This whole setup is pretty much always built because I'm always filming stuff in here. So it's just nice to have a lighting setup ready to go. I like it because it's bi-colored, so you can adjust the color temperature of the light so you can kind of match it to different shooting situations that you're in. Connected to it is this Photix 80 softbox. This thing is a great, I wouldn't say budget softbox, but something that's a little cheaper than the actual Aperture Light Dome. Now moving back to this shelf right here, we'll start with the bottom. Down here is usually where I just keep lights and light cases. So I've got my Aperture case here. I also have a Godox VL150 light here and then an SL60 and a couple other lights kind of tucked back there that you can't see. Up here, a couple sandbags. Then over here, we have a Tilta Nucleus follow focus system and then my Ronin RS2, which I'm actually shooting this video on right now. Moving up here is where it gets very unorganized. I just have a couple plastic cases that I can toss things in. So I've got cables like USB, HDMI, connection cables, power cables, random crap, random crap. Then up here, same situation. We have some hard drives kind of tucked back there. And then moving up here, just some boxes. We have like a server box and a milk crate that has some random crap in it. So yeah, it's not the prettiest, but this is just a good area for me to store everything that's out of the way. This stuff over here is more like camera accessories. So we have a motorized slider here. We've got a tripod got a V flat and then some other backdrops and stuff for when I'm shooting product videos. Apple boxes right there and then a big Pelican case that has a bunch of random accessories. And then back here, like where all of my lighting controls at. So we've got a four x four beadboard here, a porta frame kit. So it's basically like lighting cutters and like 24 by 36 frames. And then right here is a six by six Westcott scrim gym. Kind of confusing stuff if you're not into video production, but if you are, you'll probably appreciate some of that stuff. Then next to that, I have this Ikea desk chair, which I've had this for years. I think most people watching this probably have this chair or have had it at some point in their life. I just keep it here for extra seating just in case. And then if I have an editor come in, I'll move it over to the desk here. And so that pretty much covers this whole side of the studio. Now we're gonna move on to the last setup, which is this little seating area. This is probably my favorite part of the studio just because I had no idea what I was gonna do with this area for the longest time. Realized it was kind of wasted space, so I may as well turn it into an area where I could sit down and work from a couch and kind of make it feel a little more like I'm working from home here or if I have friends or clients come through for a meeting, they can sit over here, they can watch me edit over here if they need to. Both furniture pieces are from CB2. The couch is the Holden Gray sofa and the coffee table is the Mill table. Both of these together new are like almost $1,600, but I got them on Facebook Marketplace for like $600 total. So I saved a bunch of money by buying them used. And I just love the way it looks in this space, especially with the frosted windows right here and the black accents. I just think it looks really nice. Next to the couch, we have this Ikea lamp, which I think pretty much everyone and their mom owns one of these Ikea lamps. 
Tucked in the corner, I have a battery powered vacuum. This space stays pretty clean, but it's always nice to have this just in case. To the left of the sofa, I have this mini fridge, which I usually keep stocked with energy drinks, water, stuff like that. And I had it fully stocked for this video, but unfortunately I deleted all the clips of it fully stocked and looking good. So now you get to stare at my lunch that I brought. And finally, we have these three prints to the left of the couch. These are three of my favorite photos I've ever taken, not necessarily from a quality standpoint, but just for what they represent to me. So I thought it was a nice personal touch to add to this area. That's going to be a wrap on this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you all in the next one.